So now let's create uh, our standard curve. So this is the third part of working with standard curves. And for this, I am going to use um, Microsoft Excel because it has all the features that we really need. So here are the uh, data that we have been dealing with. That's for our standard curve. These are the concentrations that we just calculated or that we have chosen for our standard curve and we have just calculated how much of the stock solution we need to get to these concentrations and we make the measurements in a spectrophotometer and we record the absorbance. Obviously we need to make sure that we do uh, it at the right wavelength. So how can we now convert this into a nice standard curve? Well, first of all, we highlight uh, all the cells for our standard curve with the left mouse button pressed. Then we go to insert here uh, in the ribbon and we go to charts where we see all these bubbles where it says insert scatter uh, chart. We don't do bubble scarts, uh, charts, we go for scatter. And we choose this uh, scatter plot here, like that, and we get a nice um, scatter plot. Obviously, we would need to do a little bit of axis manipulation. So, for example, we would say what we have plotted on the uh, x-axis. This would be the concentration of the glucose. Concentration of glucose. Glucose and the unit for that would be microgram per milliliter. And for the absorbance, uh, we would just simply indicate that with absorbance. And we've got this chart. Obviously, you can very nicely do that also in Excel. So, for example, if you want to change absorbance, if you want to make this really beautiful, you go to design uh, here and you add chart elements. So, for example, you can change the axis titled primary axis or the uh, vertical axis. But I'm at the moment, I'm just simply too lazy. So. This is our standard curve. And of course, we would really like to have a nice curve with a line in it so that we can do what we want to do with the uh, relating our sample. So the way uh, to do that in Excel is you just left mouse click on one of the data points. And what you see is if you left mouse click, they're all uh, getting sort of um, activated, these data points. And you see that with these little uh, bubbly crosses or whatever. What you then do is you right click on one of these data points. And then you see another menu coming up and where it says here, add trend line. Click on that left mouse button. And you come up with a new win window here uh, and it automatically adds in a line of best fit. And it looks pretty good. OK, we've got this data point here, which is a little bit lower than we would think. But uh, in general, it looks pretty good. So we've got a line of best fit created from the data here. And what we can also do is we can display the equation for this line of best fit on uh, the chart here. And we can also display the R squared value, which is the correlation coefficient for our line of best fit. And we do that here. And I bring that up here. And let's make this a little bit larger because otherwise nobody can read this properly. 
So here we've got our values that we want to use then. Uh, so we can say we've got an, um, this is the equation and this is the r squared value. The r squared value tells us the correlation between the x values, our glucose concentration, and the absorbance. So we've got a 99% uh, correlation, which I think is uh, pretty good. It shows that our standard curve is not too bad and it shows a very strong correlation that we have here. So what we now can do is we have this uh, correlation and we can then calculate uh, what would be the concentration for our samples that we measured. So how can we do that? Well, there's a very simple trick to that. And uh, I'm just changing here to my tablet. The way we would do that is we would just simply say, well, the equation for this line of best fit, that would be mx plus c. That's a general equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c, with m being the gradient. So that's our m, that's the gradient, and the y value, and this c that would be the intercept so that is c and we have been given the equation here so we know that our gradient equals 0 0.0191 and the intercept the c equals 0 0.0047. So what we can do now is we can say, right, if we look at our first sample here, 0 0.368, this obviously would be somewhere here. That's the y value. That's the absorbance of our sample. So we know y equals 0 0.368. And what we now need to do is we need to find the corresponding x value, the con corresponding glucose concentration. And of course, we could go over here like that. Uh, where it hits the line of best fit and then go down here it would be around uh, 20 microgram. But we can do better than that because all we need to do is we now basically we are looking for the x value here. And what we need to do is we just simply rearrange this equation so that uh, we make x the subject of it. So the c goes to to that side and then we divide by m so we get x equals y minus c divided by m the gradient and that's a uh, pretty straightforward we can do that very easily in uh, excel so for the value of 0 0.368 and I change back here so for the value of 0 0.368 to find the x value what we need to do so I make this a little bit bigger so that we can easily see that what I calculate is equals. What I now do is I take the y minus the intercept. So y value that was 0 
minus the intercept, and the intercept is 0 0.0047. That is here my intercept. And then I divide it by the gradient, which is the 0 0.0107. And I get the corresponding value, so 19, so that would now be the x value, that would be glucose concentration. So nine, a glucose concentration of 19 microgram per milliliter would give us this 0 0.368 uh, concentration. Uh, absorbance, so that would be the absorbance, and that would be the corresponding glucose concentration. And I do these also a little bit bigger so that we can easily see these things. So what we have basically done is We've taken our absorbance, that is the y value of the sample, and we reverse calculated the corresponding glucose concentration that would give us this absorbance. And of course, we can do that for the other two samples. So we would do 0 0.392, that would be the third corresponding, and 0 0.409. And we do the uh, same calculation here. So here we would say equals this value minus our intercept 0 0.0047 divided by 0 0.0191. So here we would get 20, let me just make these also a little bit bigger so that we can easily see it. And for the last one, we get 0 0.409 minus the intercept 0 0.0047 divided by 0 0.0191. And here we would get 21 point something. So these are our three samples, uh, the absorbance of the three samples. And we now have determined just simply from this line of best fit um, and from the equation here that Excel kindly provides us with, we can calculate what are the glucose concentrations that give us this absorbance. And of course, what we can do is we can calculate the mean of these glucose concentrations, the mean of the sample. So let's calculate that. And again, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we can calculate the mean. So the mean in Excel is just simply average and if we start typing we get average all we need to do is highlight the numbers here don't forget to close the bracket and we get a mean of 20.15 we can also calculate a sample standard deviation and in this case, again, Excel can do that. So that is standard def. And you see here, uh, for a sample standard deviation, we need this standard def s. That's the sample. And again, we highlight the numbers here, close bracket. So we have a sample standard deviation of 1.08. And we can calculate the standard error. Standard error. We know that we do this by calculating 
the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations. So here we've got three observations. So here it would be the standard deviation that we just calculated divided by the square root of the number of observations that we have. And that was three observations and we could, would get a standard error of 0 0.62. So how are we going to report that? Well, we would usually, if we want to report it, we would, we would say for the reporting, we would usually use the conventional reporting form of the mean plus minus two times the standard error that we have calculated and that would give us a 95% coverage of the data that we could have uh, observed. And this too takes into account that we have, uh, this probably a normal distribution, but that's usually the, 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 the standard format. But of course, we would need to say that we have a 95% coverage. So that's quite easy. So we've got the mean, that's 20.155, two times the standard error. So that is, we can do that. The standard error is, so let's calculate that, equals two times the standard error. So that gives us 1.24. Again, I want to make this larger so that we can easily see this. make that larger. So we would report this as 1.2 microgram per milliliter. And what we need to do now is we need to adjust uh, the uh, number of significant figures. So uh, we usually would use one or two significant figures. So here we've got two significant figures, which should be all right. So we can report that. So 1.2, that's our uh, uncertainty. And we now need to adjust the mean that we've calculated because it has too many uh, significant figures here. So we would need to adjust it so that we have the same number of decimal points. So we've got it to one decimal point. So we would write the mean as 20 point and we need one decimal point. So we would round that up to two. So it's 20.2 plus minus 1.2. So we would report our result as 20.2 and again let's make this a little bit bigger 20.2 plus minus 1.2 microgram per milliliter so that would be the correct way how we would report the concentration of our unknown samples as 20.2 plus minus 1.2 microgram per milliliter. And that would be then the equivalent of the glucose in our honey experiment 
Of course, if we had diluted the honey in the first place, we would uh, need to take that into consideration. We would need to multiply this uh, value then with our dilution factor. So I hope this makes sense and uh, thank you very much for watching.